Hello, Samirakun, who I am, who I am, Hello, Samirakun. Who I am. Honorable head table, and my dear Gavilius. I'm Tarul Samrakon, the middle kid of the family, uh, and the boy with the most unfortunate birthday. Why do I have the worst um, for birthday? Well, that's because it's on December. That's the last month on the year, and I get the last birthdays. So what is special on this that happens on December 17th? Well, normally nothing happens on December 17th, but well, on December 17th, our household is normally festive. So that was what I thought until I was I started to prepare for this speech. And that when I started to prepare for this speech, I noticed that I was not the only person celebrating December 17th. December 17th was also a special day for another set of people, people who loved maple syrup. Honorable head table and my dear Gavilius, December 17th is the National Maple Syrup Day as well as my birthday. So continuing on, I'm 12 years, 10 months and 8 days old. That means I am literally 13. So I, well, I, I don't really remember my childhood very well, but I remember one thing, only one incident from my childhood. There, are, there's only one incident that, from my childhood that I remember clearly. So it was when I was, it happened when I was four years old. Uh, my parents moved to England when I was two years old. And it, while I was in my house, my mother bought a mechanical device and I did not know what it was. And I didn't even see it because it was in a box and she forbade me to open it. So, Every morning she took it out and rubbed it against her clothes. First, well, she, the clothes that she was going to wear for the day. So one day I went to her and asked her what it was. She said that it was an iron and it was used to keep the shirts and trousers straight. So I didn't get what that was. So the very next day I went and took it out and looked at it. I turned it over, switched it on, turned all the knobs. And then finally, I removed it from its standstill position. And then I looked down. And I was petrified by what I was seeing. I was seeing a large hole on the car, in the carpet. So it, is, it was very obvious. I feel that it's very obvious at the moment. But I didn't know what it was when I back then. I was petrified first, and then I came back to my senses. I knew that I had to hide it or I was finished. So I tried to move the cupboard, but the cupboard was too large and the distance was too long. So I was down to my final option. Just watch and let the events unfold. So my mother, it took my one week for my mother to find it out and one millisecond to know who did it. And I was forbidden from entering her room thereafter. So I had a lovely childhood with a lot of pranks and a lot of disobeying like this and a lot of death defying stunts like nearly touching an iron. So I came back to Sri Lanka and started my a normal school life because uh, the school life in England, a preschool in England cannot be classified as a normal boy because we have a lot of fun out there because, well, we don't do any, any work there. So I started a normal school life, working, studying, doing homework. And then, but I, well, I once became some class third or something, but I hated one thing. It was the worst thing in school life, extracurricular activities. I hated staying after school. So I never did any extracurricular activities and I didn't even be, get to be a prefect, a junior prefect, no, a primary prefect while I was in grade five. So I went to grade six and I started some of my favorite activities. The first one is scouting. Well, some say that the friends you have in scouting will be there forever because when you do scouting, 
it builds up a relationship that can nearly never be broken so that's why i like scouting because we with the with your friends in a troop you can have all the fun you want there's no limit and we can do anything we want no supervision and nothing so in scouting our activities are activities are always like throwing water balloons and stuff like that so i always look forward for my scouting days so the next one is photography i like photography mainly because it's an art so it builds up self esteem so that means when you look at your own picture and you see that it's a very good picture you feel a great deal of pride because you know that it's yours and it's worth something so if you go and ask my what my hobbies are i will always say one thing and that is i collect things so i don't collect everything i find like some of those boys you can find collecting car tires and horse pipes thinking that they'll be useful one day no i don't collect things like that i collect memories things that remind me of my past because well i'm not very good at having having a long time memory so i collect things to remind me things like postcards coins and other maps so you can easily understand that if you came into my room and looked at it so because well my room has various things so the it has various things in one corner you can find a 2020 elect, election result sheet and in the other one you can find a sweden map and behind me right behind me at the moment you can see a scotland map i have various maps various articles all around my room so continuing on i have four i have four dreams in my life i want to achieve those because i would be remembered specially in this country i will leave my mark in this country if i'll be able to do it my first one is to being a doctor that was my ambition since i was kid and i mainly chose that because well because my father is also a doctor number 1 and number 2 well as i want to be an eye doctor specifically i want to treat people's eyes because i know very well how it's not to how you it's not it's to feel you can't see because i can't see and you have to trust me that i may i have dreadful eyesight so i want to treat patients every day and make them feel good because complete darkness it's nothing comforting so that's the first one i want to be an eye doctor and help people out from the darkest days so my second dream is to climb the everest i know that's a kind of an exceptional dream something that can nearly kill you but i want to do it because it's one of the hardest physical challenges anybody can imagine the everest is the tallest mountain of the uh, on earth as everybody here knows and i want to be the youngest person in sri lanka to climb it i would try to do may do it on the world but the first the youngest person who has cl- may climb the everest is younger than me so continuing on the third one my third may my third dream is to climb the k2 that's the second tallest mountain on earth so why do i want to climb it well climbing the everest is not the only thing that you have you can do it might be the tallest but it's not the hardest the hardest mountain to climb is k2 because it has a it has a fatality rate of 32% that means out of every 100 people who climb that mountain 32 are dead so they said that the path is littered with bodies like some parts so my fourth dream is to plant 100000 trees 100000 trees is not a real easy thing really easy thing because well even planting one tree takes a large time i want to plant 100000 trees because many people cut down forests instead of growing them i have i want to be an exceptional person who dedicated money to grow trees and to help people so if i will be able to finish all those all those dreams before i'm dead 
I'll be one of, I'll be remembered exceptionally because a doctor who had planted 100,000 trees, climbed and climbed the hardest and tallest mountains on earth and treated a lot of patients will be great. So finally coming on, I think now I've told you about my past, which I barely know, my present, which is not interesting, and my future, which I hope will be full of dead defying stunts. So I think that covers the executive summary. So before I conclude, I hope I broke the ice. Thank you. Thanks for watching.